Hello? Hello? Are we live? Are we live? Hello? What's going on? I'm only kidding. We're live! <laughs> hey everybody! Welcome to the first uh, Baby Shower live stream of 2024. Thank you so much for joining us. I see eight people in the live feed so far. I always try to figure out, I did this last year, if you were watching, I couldn't find the chat, I couldn't see who was there, I couldn't see who was saying hello. All right, everyone, hey, my name is Becky. Um, I'm going to be your host for the next four or five weeks um, of this year's Baby Shower and Baby Shower live stream. Uh, tonight, joining me in the Baby Shower, we have Mel. She's our Director of Wildlife Care and Services. And on the chat right now, we have Kyla, who is our clinic supervisor. So Kyla is going to be popping some information in the chat for you as well. So why are we here? We are here, A, to give our supporters, like all of you, um, you know, an opportunity to, to see wild babies up close, something that, you know, is really... Uh, unusual and something that you wouldn't often be able to see. And also to raise funds. Uh, it's a really busy, busy time of year for us. We take in, you know, six to seven times more patients at this time of year. So it's a fundraising opportunity for us as well. But before we start, I'm trying to see if I can see the chat. I had this problem last year. Do you remember? I couldn't see who was talking to me. I want to know where you are uh, watching from. So why don't you pop that in the chat for me? Say hello. Say hi in the chat. Tell me where you're watching from. Hopefully I'll see it, but I can't see anything right now. Isn't this awful? This is what happens with a live feed. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be, be able to say hi to any of you. How did you find out about this? How did you find out about Calgary Wildlife? And tell us where you're watching from again, please. Yeah, what a bummer. All right. I'll figure it out for next time. Sorry, everyone. Okay, so why are we here? We're here to raise money, as I said. Uh, we're also here to give you an opportunity to see some baby wild animals up close. Um, so we have a lot of really great ways for you to, to get involved uh, this year. So one of the first ones, I'm gonna ask Kyla to pop into the chat. Um, we have a 50-50, a 50-50 raffle, um, which has already started. So this has been going on for a week or so now. We're already at 6K. Um, and that can go up to $20,000. So 10K for you and 10K for the wild animals. So you can get your tickets anytime. Um, the second opportunity we have for you to get involved is uh, we have a incubator fundraiser right now for our uh, babies. We always need to, you know, put babies in incubators and we need them obviously when we, you know, have patients that have surgeries that need to go in there or just patients that come in, you know, in a critical state. So we're short a few of those right now. So we have a GoFundMe set up already. Um, so Kyla can pop that link into the chat as well. And we have a really cool opportunity starting right now. So the first five donors, the first five donors of $25 or more that, that, uh, that donate through that dedicated donation link that Kyla is going to pop into the chat for you in a few seconds will be sent an extra special limited edition you only get it when you come to the baby shower thank you gift in the post so first five donors twenty five dollars or more and what else oh finally we have you know we do this every year the top three donors of the whole baby shower so that runs right until the end of june top three donors will be sent an extra special thank you for donating gift um, in the post as well so um, I think I mentioned our, our fundraising goal was $30,000. That covers around two months of food and medication uh, costs for our patients. Like I said, we, we take in six to seven times more patients at this time of year. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, anything can help. Um, and I think that's about it. I got a bit, you know, I've lost my, I've lost what I was going to do because I can't see what's happening in the chat. I hope you guys can all hear me. I'll have to figure it out for next time. I apologize. So I'm going to stop chatting. Um, I think most of you probably know who we're going to be seeing tonight, but if you don't follow our social media, you may not know. Um, they look like Muppets when they're babies. They're adorable. They are great horned owlets. They're called owlets. They're so cute. So we're going to go in um, and, and see them, learn a bit about them. But before we do that, 
I'm going to introduce you to our Director of Wildlife Care and Services, Wildlife Biologist, Bat and Beaver Expert Extraordinaire. Her name is Mel and she's giggling now. <laughs> I'm going to flip you over to her. Okay, hold on one second. Flip around. Tita! Hi, everybody. <laughs> and they look like grouchy bumpets. They really do. They're so grouchy, but they're so cute. All right, Mel, thank you so much for being here and doing this. This is our third baby shower together. Time flies. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we go in, tell us a bit about these two uh, outlets and why they came into our care. Yeah, so these guys are both from separate uh, nests and the parents weren't found. So we weren't able to reunite. Typically, we try to reunite if we can. But in these cases, these two owls were, um, outlets were actually orphaned. Oh dear. And they came in around the same time? Uh, they came in about two weeks apart from each other. Gotcha. And so in the wild, what are some of the common uh, ways, I guess, that owls would become injured or, or maybe even die? Yeah, there's multiple things. Um, typically, they would, uh, with man-made structures, sometimes they might hit a structure. Um, the other thing that can happen is rodenticide, so people that are using rat poison, they're often not thinking about the other animals that potentially are getting targeted. They may be targeting mice, but you have that whole food chain, right? Um, the other thing is diseases. So there's like HPAI, which is avian influenza that has taken some populations out, and West Nile virus. Gotcha. Um, and how about while these owls or owlets are living in the wild with their parents, mm -hmm. what are they eating? Are they, they're surely not eating full mice already, are they? Well, should we? Oh. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what they are eating actually is the parents will go out and catch the prey, um, and then they regurgitate that back. And then, so they'll, they'll basically bring up little pieces of meat. So that's kind of what we've simulated here. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And so you just showed us a bit. I mean, don't people, if you're, if you're squeamish, yes. look away, but don't we'll look. just have a real quick, oh gosh. Yeah, so okay. this is a combination of uh, various mice and then some supplements that are in there as well. So we're obviously feeding the mice supplements. Um, how often are they fed in our care? So it depends on their age. Obviously, when they're younger, they're going to be fed more often. Um, but then this, these guys that we're about to feed now, they're a bit older. So they're down to twice a day at this point. Gotcha. Okay, I'm going to flip back to me. I'm still trying to figure out these this, this whole comment thing. This happened to me last year. And um, I don't know. I guess I'm just too old for this live stream business. <laughs> um, okay, before we go in, we talked about this last year. So when we go in you know, to feed or treat any of our patients, we are silent. We don't speak. This is because, you know, A, they're wild animals, and to them, we're predators, you know, they don't know better. Um, so we don't want to freak them out and stress them out, number one. And number two, we don't want them to, you know, become uh, uh, habituated and accustomed to, to the human voice. So Mel and I are going to go in, we're going to be super quiet, but don't worry, Kyla's in the chat. Any questions that you have, please do, you know, pop them in there for Kyla. She can answer them. Um, she can also, you know, pop in, if you forgot what the, the donation link is, she can pop those in there again for you. Um, and then we're going to be silent, but we'll come back out um, and there'll be a few more questions. And then that will be the end of it. Gosh, it is flying already 10 minutes. All right, let's go now. I'm going to flip around again. There we go. Okay. <laughs>
They might have been camera shy. They might have been camera shy. <laughs> oh, well, you guys got to see them up close. They're super cute, right? Super cute. All right, I'm going to flip back over to you, Mel. Yeah, the beauty of live <laughs> television. Um, yeah, they, they're obviously not hungry. So what we're doing at this stage of their, their life is we do offer some solid food there for them. So they'll you know, learn to pick at that as well. And then the tweezer feeds that we're doing now are just kind of like a supplemental feed. So they obviously were picking at the mice earlier today. <laughs> and, uh, oh, well. That's okay. Yeah. I think that people got to see them up close, which we don't, you yeah. know, most people wouldn't get to see a Muppet yeah. outlet up close like that. That's okay. Thanks. That's great, Mel. Um, all right. Where am I on my sheet? So I saw you were trying to get them to eat and you were doing the sort of like what parent, human parents do with like, here comes the airplane. Kind of. Yeah. Like, what is that about? Yeah. So what I was actually doing is they have these feathers that are very close to what they're called the sear of the beak. Mm -hmm. And that's where their nostrils are. And so I was kind of rubbing the food around there so they could smell it and that they're also feeling it on the feathers to kind of entice them to open up their beak. So parents will do that and they'll move their head around. You could see them doing that. Like that's kind of what they'll do and then uh, feed them. So interesting. Okay. Um, so these are great horned owls. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit about um, in the wild where, like a, what regions of the country they live in and I guess how far would they travel from their home, yeah. their home turf? Yeah, so they live all over Canada and most of the U.S. as well. Um, they typically like forested areas or parks. We do see them in the city, so they'll live in cities, especially where there's like big evergreens and such in the parks. Um, field edges, they like that as well. And so food, as far as how far they will travel, it all depends on the food availability. So, you know, if they're by a nice field, um, they can just leave the nest, fly down, and hopefully catch some food fairly quickly. Other times they might have to fly, you know, up to 15 kilometers. Gotcha. Okay. Um, they're called great horned yes. owls. Tell us about their horns. So, yeah, the horns are just little feathers, um, and it just helps with their camouflage. So when they're in trees, it kind of just breaks up that, that outline of them and, and helps with camouflage. Gotcha. Final question for you, and then you're done for the night. Sure. What is your favorite owl fact? Oh, there's so many. They're so cool. Um, I think probably the flight, not the flight list, sorry, the, the, the sound list. The sound list where they, they have silent flight. Silent flight, that's it. Um, and I've actually seen a project that they did where they were recording owls going back and forth in a, in a space and recording it, and it was like zero sound. And what's the and reason for that? Well, for hunting, gotcha. obviously. So they just they, they hear their prey. They have excellent hearing as well. And then they kind of swoop down and catch the prey quickly. Amazing. All right, I'm going to flip around to me. You're done, Mel. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you didn't get to see them eating, but hey, you saw them up close. And they were pretty darn cute, right? The big eyes. I mean, they do look like Muppets, not just me. So a few reminders. Um, our fundraising goal for this year is $30,000. Uh, that covers only about two months of food um, and medication costs for our patients. Um, so lots of great ways for you to, to get involved. First way is the 50-50. Uh, Kyla will pop that link in the chat for you in a second. Get your tickets before they sell out. Please do us a solid and, um, you know, send your friends and your family and your coworkers and your neighbors and, and your cousins and all of those people um, links to our 50-50 to our so we can get up to 20K. We get up to 20K, you get 10, and the animals get 10. Uh, what else? We have the uh, incubator GoFundMe. Kyla will pop that into the chat. Hopefully we'll be able to get a couple more new incubators on site in the summer um, just so we have enough for not only our babies but any like critical patients that come in. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, those five spots, the first five donors of $25, those spots might be gone by now, um, but they might not be. You never know. Try your luck. So it's the dedicated donation link that Kyla will have popped into the chat for us. Um, first five donors are $25. You'll be sent a special gift in the mail. And again, the top three donors of the whole month will also be get, sent a special gift in the mail. I think that's it. So what's next? We're doing this for four or five weeks, depending on what we have come into care. So this was week number 
one. Uh, week number two is again next Tuesday. So same place, same time, 7 p.m., uh, Calgary Wildlife. What do we have? We don't know. We don't know what we're going to be spotlighting. Um, so you're going to have to keep an eye on our socials. Uh, if you follow us on, on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, or X, formerly Twitter, uh, we'll announce there next Tuesday morning. But if you don't want to miss that announcement, you know, sometimes the algorithm uh, doesn't, doesn't work in our favor, go to our website, calgarywildlife.org. In the footer of the, um, of the website, you'll be able to sign up for e email updates. Uh, so every Tuesday morning, we'll send an email out announcing what the baby is and kind of our fundraising raising progress. And, you know, we have a lot of really cool stuff in our newsletters, too. So please sign up for email updates. Um, and I think that's about it. I, I really will try to figure out what's going on in the chat. I know I had people coming to listen tonight, and now I can't see you. So I'm so sorry if you've come. And anyway, hi, everyone, and thanks for coming. <laughs> and um, same place, same time next Tuesday. Uh, and thanks. Thanks for coming. And thank you so much for supporting Wildlife Rehab. See you next week. Bye.